Yeah. Anyway, let's get back to why we are here to learn and network and so on. And we have an amazing group of speakers that have donated their time and talents to share all of their information with us. Um, I am going to welcome Weja up to the stage, and she is going to tell us all about failure to big tech or from failure to big tech, a typical job hunting strategies, and an interesting little fun fact about her. She can taste the very distinct differences between all the different kinds of like tap water, regular water, distilled water, all these things. So please take it away. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all for the, thank you Kat for the introduction. My name is Weja, as Kat was uh, talking about, and today I'm going to talk about from failure to big tech, a typical job hunting strategies. Have you ever frustrated with the security job hunting process? Have you ever been set back by the rejection emails? I have many, many times. I'm Wei Zhe Yan and my pronouns are she, her. I am going to share with you about my security journey, sharing about my internship job hunting journey and what worked, what didn't work, how I turned what didn't work into my strengths. Now, just so that we're clear, I'm only speaking on behalf of myself today. I'm not speaking as a representative of my employer. I feel like it's my duty as a part of this community to share this journey and how I navigated through some of the difficulties and setbacks to get to here today. So who am I and what do I do? I go to a lot of conferences. I like talking to people and learning about your stories. I love fashion. I love makeup and some really good coffee. I'm a member of Women's Cybersecurity WESIS. I went to undergrad in Texas A&M University where I discovered my passion for cybersecurity and now I'm getting my master's at Carnegie Mellon University in cybersecurity. But most importantly, I am a proud member in the security community. And there's, there's a photo of me and my friends at DEF CON last year. We were trying to connect our badges together past the signal. I also want to take a moment and share my security story. Growing up in an Asian immigrant family, my parents wanted me to pursue a traditional stable career of becoming a lawyer. I always thought I would become a lawyer. And entering college, one thing that worked well for me was that you can pretty major in anything that you want in undergrad to be able to eligible, uh, be eligible for law school. So I took advantage of that and finally majored in business management information systems and later fell in love with cybersecurity. Now, when I told my family I wanted to pursue this as a career, my mom's first instinct was like, cybersecurity, that should be a guy's job. You should go study focusing on LSAT, which is the law school entrance exam. So my parents never think that I would become a STEM-like person. I was raised to be taught as this girl who was supposed to be obedient, nice, and good at anything liberal arts related and not so much about STEM. Not to mention there are so many doubts because cybersecurity was so new at the time. It's almost unheard of for any of our family friends to pursue it as a career. So I had to continuously convince myself and my parents um, to pursue this as a career. I feel really bad because my parents gave up everything to come to the United States for my education. And how could I do this to them? I had multiple rounds of convincing with my family over my own career. And that later turned into arguments, fights, and tears. But my family's opposition did not stop me from doing what I'm passionate about. 
I took on leadership positions in my university cybersecurity clubs, hosted presentations, and started to go into cybersecurity conferences and getting involved with the community in general. Through all these experiences, I heard that certifications help with job seeking. And to break into the field, the Security Plus has an entry level certification that is very beginner friendly. At the time, I didn't have too much experiences relating to working in security or even IT in general. And being involved in the field, I was desperate to work in security. At the time, COVID also hit. I had an internship, but it was later canceled. So I decided to use the summer as an opportunity for self-improvement and dedicated the time to study for Security Plus. Now, when I told my family that I was studying for a certification, my parents didn't believe that I can do it. Through one entire summer of dedicated studying, I eventually passed the exam and proved to my to my family that I'm capable of doing cybersecurity and earned their respect. My passion now drove me to my next chapter of my master's in Carnegie Mellon University. Initially, I was debating on whether I should go to CMU because I was offered a full-time position. But after doing thorough research, I realized that this is really whom I want to become. And this is whom I really, where I really want to go. I wanted to pursue CMU because I want to enhance my technical abilities in security. And fast forward to today, I made the right decision. But the CMU journey has not always been an easy route. I failed many, many times. And here's another story. In my program, there is a mandatory internship that's required for me to graduate. And I only had a tight two months to do it because I was admitted in the spring which means I only have one summer to do the internship and that'll be right immediately after my first semester. I was juggling through academics, navigating through uncharted waters, transitioning to my first semester and applying to internships. Compared to all other fall start students who already have their internships land up, uh, lined up, it was a little stressful for me because all of them that had their internships already and I has I still have to do mine on top of a 40 hour per week workload. I sent in more than 150 job applications after the first two weeks of tirelessly applying. In the first month, I received more than 80 rejection emails and I was later able to get some interviews afterwards, had two interviews that continued to the second round, but they're all rejected in the second round of technical interviews as my non-technical background did not match some of their requirements. At this point, the clock is ticking. I only have three weeks left. My stress level is higher than ever. But as the wise men say, failure is the essence of self-discovery. As much as my heart felt by the setbacks, I sat down and really analyzed the situation I was in and came up with the following analysis. I discovered that my shortcoming was in technical skills and my strengths was good at handling interpersonal relationships. Although I might not be the strongest in technical assessments yet, I always rock every single inter behavioral interviews. I started to ask myself this question, what is a solution that can bridge the gap together? And typically, when we think of cybersecurity, we think of coding, finding vulnerabilities, binary exploitation. But what if we're still working on the skills, building on this technical skills? What is a way that we can get our foot in the door? I thought of a framework I learned in business school which is the SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis has always been a critical starting point for me for strategic learning and thinking. And let's start from there. The SWOT analysis is something that I learned from the business school. Normally, we use it for corporate planning and building strategies, but I found them especially useful when I do evaluations on myself. 
SWOT analysis stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. For strengths, I ask myself, what do I do well? What's, uh, what are unique strategies or unique resources can I draw on? What do others see as my strengths? For weaknesses, what could I improve? Where do I have fewer resources than others? And what are others likely to see as my strengths? Opportunities, what well, opportunities are open to me? What trends could I take advantage of? And how can I turn my strengths into opportunities? For threats, what threats could harm me? What threats does my weaknesses expose me to? Now, strengths and weaknesses, they're intrinsic factors. I have control over them, and I can make necessary changes from time to time. Opportunities and threats, though, they're extrinsic. They depend on the larger market outside of my control. In my case, it was the job market. I can take advantage of opportunities and protect against threats through proper SWOT analysis. My strengths was that I have some baseline security skills and currently working on a technical security degree but I also have excellent interpersonal writing skills and a little bit previous exposure in the field of GRC. My weaknesses are that I have not obtained my technical skills yet because at the time I was just starting off my program. Opportunities are that there are non-technical positions in security to start off, but the threat was that I only have three weeks left. And combining all that, I decided to prioritize my time and energy and get into a very targeted search of GRC roles. But I also kept my options open, taking my search on 80-20, which is 80% on GRC-related roles and 20% on engineering roles. Now it's your favorite part of the presentation. Let's take a moment and do a quick thinking exercise. With some, something that you're comfortable writing down, analyze the following. Strengths, what do you do well? What unique resources can you draw on? What do others see as your strengths? Weaknesses, what could you improve? Where do you have fewer resources than others? What are others likely to see as your weaknesses? Opportunities. What opportunities are open to you? What trends can you take advantage of? How can you turn your strengths into opportunities? With threats, what threats could harm you? What threats does your weaknesses expose you to? Once you are done, talk to your neighbor, share with your findings. Maybe you're a student, you're good at technology in general and wanting to branch into security. And the opportunities would be starting off taking a part-time position in your school relating to cyber as a possibility. But that also applies to all stages of your, our careers. Maybe you're in cybersecurity already but you want to work on leadership roles. The opportunities could be starting by leading projects. Now let's take a moment and do the quick, quick thinking exercise. I'll come back in three minutes.
That's one minute passing, two minutes left. Thirty se thirty seconds left. Wrapping up. All right, ten seconds left. Alrighty. After I did my SWOT analysis, I realized that my strengths are networking, just as important as learning about computer networking. The people kind of networking is just as important. I started to realize how important it is by going to conferences and just talking with lots of people, and you all are at the right place for that. And my experiences have nothing but positive. People welcomed me with open arms, sharing with me their experiences, and making me feel like I really belong here. An important reason of why I love the security field so much is because of the people in here. In the community, I have re received countless love, support, and help. You are also a part of it, so don't feel hesitate to reach out if you ever need help. There are also so many other ways to network. You can follow Twitter infosec, join Discords, Reddit groups. You can connect with recruiters on LinkedIn. And pro tip, they typically contain talent acquisition and university recruiter in their title. You can reach out to them and ask them to pass your resume directly to the hiring manager. In this way, you can circumvent the screening and handing your resume directly to the right people. But most importantly, going to conferences. So many opportunities here. We, got to, we get to see each other in person. We get to meet new people, get to make new friends. So please give yourself a round of applause for being here. You're amazing. Circling back to the last but not least piece of my advice, my strategies. Here I want to share one of my favorite quotes. When I get knocked down, I'll get back up. I might not be the smartest person in the room, but I'll strive to be the greatest. In school, I often don't feel like the smartest person in the room, but I never give up and I always try. Each time I try, I think, I think hard. What is something that I can do to make this work? If you're also wanting to get into security and applying for jobs, I want you to have this quote. The essence is to never give up. You may fall, you may fail many times, but you get up and you try again in a different way. As long as if you keep trying, I promise you the hard work will pay itself off. And to summarize 
the three things I did differently after experiencing the setbacks are number one, target the areas of strengths and experiences. I'm good at writing and explaining complicated technical terms into everyday people languages. So I pivoted to applying for mostly GRC related roles. Number two is networking. Talk with people in the community. Learn about their journey. Ask about their stories in the field. Ask if they have any people that they recommend you to talk with. Number three is to never give up. Keep trying, being gritty is the key. Going through the process with a fresh new strategy, I feel like these are not only lessons for job hunting, but some also for career advice and some even for life. After all those conferences, networking, I, I was also constantly reaching out. And one day I saw a job posting from my network with a recruiter's contact information. So I cold emailed the recruiter with what I think I'm capable for the position and attached my resume to it. And applications quickly turned into interviews and quickly turned into offers. As a result, I was eventually able to land a security internship at a major tech company. And I also just wanted to take a moment to say that everyone can make a career in cybersecurity and you belong here. I didn't let the rejection emails get to me because I know they do not define who I am. Instead, they allowed me to think critically and play my strengths. I think of setbacks as detours in my journey. They allowed me to learn more about myself and become a stronger person, but also get to achieve my end goal. Now, looking back, I, there are just parts of the story that I get to share with you today. Anyone can make a career in cybersecurity, and you belong here. I also wanted to share with you a tool. Now, I'm not sponsored by NIST for saying this, but I think it's a great tool for cybersecurity, uh, which is the National Cybersecurity Workforce Force Framework, also known as the NICE Framework. It's developed by NIST, National Institute of Standard, Standards and Technology. It is a cybersecurity career roadmap and it helps students develop skills, job seekers to demonstrate abilities, competencies, and employees to accomplish tasks. Helped me understand what knowledge, skills, and abilities should I gain to land my job in this specialized area. It also broadened my scope, so I was able to understand different areas in security early on. I'm using it as a reverse engineering tool. You can ask yourself the question, what is your dream cybersecurity career? And you can use the framework and to find the KSAs and corresponding to it and work backwards. Here's an example of a cyber defense incident responder, a responder, a blue team role. The job description says it an investigates, analyzes, and responds to cyber incidents within the network environments or enclave. The NICE framework lists out tasks, which is retired now, knowledge, skills, and abilities required for the role. For example, underneath the knowledge section, the first knowledge, K0001, is the knowledge of computer networking concepts and protocols and network security methodologies. The first skill, S0003, is skills of identifying, capturing, containing, and reporting malware. First ability, K0121, is the ability to design incident response for cloud service models. The tool, as you can see, it's not perfect because it takes a long time um, and it's really time consuming to map back and see the descriptions. But it's a great point to start off with. Now, let's take a look at a red team role. We can see here, this is the red team example for exploitation analyst. The description says it collaborates to identify access and collection gaps that can be satisfied through cyber collection and war preparation activities, leverages all authorized resources and analytics techniques to penetrate targeted networks. 
The NIST frameworks lists out job, lots of job descriptions in the corresponding categories typically required for the job. This way, I set a small goal for myself. For example, if I want to be an exploitation analyst, I can find out that KSAs and work my way backwards. This is also a good tool, um, example of NIST, NISTER 8193, which is the work role capability indicators. And this one lists out examples of cyber defense analysts for education, training, certifications, and experiential learning, and their requirements in all different levels. And another way I use the NIST framework is to map my own KSAs. I mapped out my own KSAs. As you can see, here are them. After I finished mapping them, I just realized those are skills I had but didn't know how to put on, how to describe, or how to put on on my resume. And here's how exactly you can put them on your resume. I would recommend taking the time and map it on your own. It's really worth it. Great cover letter resource also. For example, I got the K0018 knowledge of encryption algorithms from my information security course. I got the S0081 skills in using network analysis tools to identify vulnerabilities from playing CTFs. I got A0058 abilities to execute OS commands, such as IP config, netstat, from just learning from ethical hacking YouTube videos. I will be adding more and more KSAs as I learn and grow in the field, and you will too. Now, besides our KSAs, what else can we use this framework for? What else can we map? If you're a student like myself, I also recommend mapping it your own courses. It allowed me to compare and add a few points on my own KSA. Same apply if you're studying for certifications or trainings. You can really map everything that helps you to learn and grow in the field. And sky is the limit. Now, one of the biggest lessons I learned early on in my applications is that I didn't really know what I wanted or knowing what I'm really capable of doing. So I've only applied for security engineering tool, the roles because that was the most common. But security nowadays is more than security engineering. If you want to do offensive security, there are keywords such as penetration testing, security research, and if you want to do blue teaming, DFIR, digital forensics, incident response, SOCIN, you can be a SOC analyst, which stands for security operations center analyst, IT auditor, cyber risk analyst, are some examples to look into. Threat intelligence is also a great example for pro protein. Now, knowing what to roles to look for gave me a lot of flexibility and options. As I mentioned, I was working on my technical skills. And these are the ones I define as my strengths as my NY SWOT analysis. These are the roles I looked into. We have GRC, Governance, Risk, and Compliance, security auditors that conduct security audits based on organization and governmental policies. Security consultants are the ones who oversee security operations for companies or consult with clients independently to help organizations identify areas of improvements. Cyber law and policy making are pretty self-explanatory. Privacy is a new rising field with the introduction of GDPR, the EU General Data Protection Regulation. California also has two, California Consumer Privacy Act, California Pri uh, Privacy Rights Act. Now, despite the fact that I'm focusing on non-technical areas of security from now, because I want to pl play my strengths to the fullest under a time crunch, I still want to wor work on my technical skills. And you're in the, if you're in a situation that you want to do technical security but still new to it, where can you start? Pico CTF is a free platform that allows you to learn security skills all year long. I'm a little biased because Carnegie Mellon developed it um, 
but it was frankly my very first own CTF, even before I got into the school. And it introduced me to the world of Jeopardy styled CTFs. I heard it might be many people's CT first CTF also. It's a great platform, and the Diana Initiative is, CTF is hosted from the CT, uh, Pico CTF staff. And you can start by playing. And shout out to my people, and let's so, show them some support. You can also build your own passion projects, such as building your home lab. YouTube has some really great resources on how you can do that. I do booted, for example, I do booted my machine, and that has taught me so much about systems. I had to dig into BIOS and change some security settings, which is super fun. Now, as a student, I'm still exploring different options by taking various courses. Once I know an area I want to specialize in, I would build my curriculum surrounding it. For example, if I want to take courses relating to GRC, I want to choose uh, courses that teach skills including cyber risk, CIS controls, Center for Information Security, ISO, and NIST frameworks. But in general, having skills in networking, Linux, Mac, Windows, programming, and scripting are just helpful and important. If you're currently not pursuing a degree, these are the resources that help that helped me personally learn and grow in the field. Diane Initiative has an amazing career village and job posting. I would take advantage of that and check it out. And it's also it also has great, amazing resources. I myself am um, a scholarship recipient from the Diane Initiative and super grateful for Diane Initiative for giving me the opportunity to come to the conference and talking. I'm also a member of WESIS Women in Cybersecurity. I benefited tremendously from this work. I actually found out that my program from here, it also has amazing career villages, um, career fair and job posting, and inspiring, inspiring talks also. WESIS has a great balance of professionals and students, but I think both groups are able to learn a lot from the conference. I love the work so much that I told every woman in security in my university about it and encouraged them to apply and attend the conference. Security villages are also fun because you can get hands-on experiences on those. I might personally am a hands-on learner, so I like to mess with things. And if, you're, if you are like me, you should definitely check, it, check them out. Try Hack Me and Hack the Box are CTFs you can learn and practice ethical hacking. Black Hills Information Security do amazing educational videos. I really benefited one, from one of their videos on hacker job hunting. Now, I'm not sponsored by any of them, just speaking on my personal experiences. And I'm sure everybody has their own ex uh, resources that would, you love or benefited from a lot from. So in the next minute, I want you to take, pa I want to take a pause in there, and I want you to turn to someone new and share with them your favorite resource. Yes, oh. or in undergrad, not yeah. masters. Yeah. If oh, awesome! Yeah, good to hear. That's awesome. If you have some good resources, run up to the mic and because remember we're streaming. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> Go ahead. Any volunteers? <laughs> Ooh. My favorite resource is the Portswigger Web Security Academy. So it does a full breakdown of all the different um, kind of classic attacks for web security and teaches you how to use Burp Suite. Um, and I thought I've, I thought that was a great resource for learning. Mm -hmm. And what's the what's the name of the uh, website or uh, Portswigger? They're Portswigger. the makers of Burp Suite. Got it. They have a Web Security Academy. It walks you through 
all the classic web um, security attacks. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Thank you mm -hmm. for sharing. Yeah. Alrighty, and that wraps up my presentation. Thank you so much for attending. And thanks to my mentor, Jennifer Cox, and David Pham for practicing my talk with me. I'm most active on LinkedIn, so find me there if you want to get in touch. Um, now I am opening to questions. If there are any questions, please go up to the mic. Okay, I'll ask a question. Yes. Um, tell us another fun fact. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, um, I speak two languages fluently. That is always a fun fact. Of course. <laughs> Thank you so much. This Thank was a you. great talk. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.